great you are good. And your mercy endure forever.
It's only by the goodness of God that we made it to 2020. What do you say in the house of God? That's why we come in the house of God to give him praise and honor and glory. If I get to your word, just go on and say amen or lift your hand. And, and, and we magnify him and we glorify him and we praise him and we worship him. I thought I had some worshipers in the house. Uh, we we, we want to make sure that we give God his due because he is great. He has been great. He will be great. And he always said... God is greater than who we are. We're only here in 2020 because of him, not because of what I have done, not because I am so smart, not because I'm brilliant, not because I make so much money, not because I have a good job, not because of this church. We are only here because of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God Almighty. I wish I had some help in the house today. I want to say amen in the house of God. I have a very simple message that I'd like to share with you as we embark on this new year. I, I believe in starting journeys fresh in the new year. It's just something about uh, having a clean slate. Um, you know, I'm not big into New Year's resolutions per se. Uh, but I, I enjoy starting things fresh and new. It's something about experiencing the year of our Lord 2020 AD. I believe that we have great things in store. Uh, so if you wouldn't just uh, wouldn't mind just giving me your attention for the next several moments uh, as we look at a passage in 1 Samuel chapter 7, uh, starting with verse 3. I'm going to read this in your hearing. This is from the King James Version of the Bible, which says this, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Verse four, then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, 
that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. Verse 11, and the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Beth Car. And finally, verse 12, the word of the Lord declares this. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I'm going to read that last verse, verse 12, one more time, as it is the focus of our study for today. It says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. The title for our message today is one simple word, and that word is hitherto. Let's bow our, our, our heads together. Father, as we embark on this new year, we believe that you have a fresh new journey for us. Lord, we're excited about this journey for this new year. We, we believe that you haven't called us to uh, live and experience this new year just for no reason. We believe that you do things with specificity and with, with reason, with, spe with, uh, with intent. Uh, so, Lord, we, we dedicate this year to you. We pray that this will be a blessed and hallowed year because your presence has gone with us. May we receive a re revelation of your son, Jesus Christ, today. In his name we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen. It may seem a, a bit sacrilegious, but I'm not a huge fan of the King James Version of the Bible. Some folk enjoy it, and others live and die by it, and don't think that any other version of the Bible should be read or studied, and I'm not here to debate or argue, anything like that. I'm just here to declare that that, 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 that the King James is, is written in the Victorian English of a bygone era and is filled with antiquated words such as thine and, and thee and thou, words that we no longer use anymore. Nonetheless, there's one word that really moves me in the King James Version, and it's the word hitherto. The word hitherto is pregnant with meaning and possibilities that separate the back then from the right now. It means that up until this point, something has happened. What the text is saying is that up until this time in my life, the Lord has helped me, and it doesn't seem that he has run out of the blessing business because I know that he will help again hitherto. Somebody say hitherto. See, up until this point, God had been very gracious to the Israelites in the text in 1 Samuel chapter 7. 20 years previous to this story, they had seen some tougher times. Samuel had just been established as a prophet in Israel. And before Samuel began hearing from God, there had been no prophetic word from the Lord in Israel for a very long time. God had not spoken to his people as he usually had done in generations past. The priests continued their usual ministry, but with no word from on high. The Israelites continued their religious experience as if it was business as usual. But now that Samuel is an established prophet in Israel, they just knew that any battle that they would fight, that they would win it. 1 Samuel chapter 4 says that Israel went out, this is three chapters previous to our scripture reading for today, that they went out to battle against the Philistines and Israel was defeated by the Philistines who killed about 4,000 men. 
when they lost, they couldn't understand what happened. So they regrouped and they discussed what they could do to defeat the Philistines. And so they came up with the bright idea that if simply having Samuel as their prophet, if that wasn't going to work to win some of their battles, that they would bring the direct representation of God to the battle with them. And so they sent word to the city of Shiloh to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield. They knew that if they didn't win before without it, oh no, they were definitely about to win some battles now. And when the Ark of the Covenant entered the camp of Israel, the Bible says that the soldiers, the Israelite soldiers, gave such a triumphant shout that the whole ground began to tremble. But as happy as they were, when it actually came time for battle, Israel lost worse than it did in the first battle, losing 30,000 more soldiers. These were some hard lessons for Israel to learn. God had to teach them that you ultimately don't win when your heart is far from God. I wish somebody could help me today. You're never at an advantage when you're not serving God like you know you should. And new life, as we embark on this new year of 2020, there will be a temptation to put God aside and focus on some other things in life. I'm here to warn you. There, there will be a temptation to think that because you had success and blessings in the year 2019, that you can ride on the coattails of that success. There's a temptation to think that the more success you have, that you somehow made it there on your own. But the word of God declares that what does it profit a man that he gained the whole world but lose his soul? This is why by the time we get to our chapter for today, 20 years later, 20 years later in first chapter and first Samuel chapter seven, the Ark of the Covenant has been returned to Israel. But in verse three, Samuel is calling them to repentance. Samuel tells them, he says, if you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods. Put away the Ashtoreth from among you and direct your heart to the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Samuel is trying to let them know, listen, it's not about the Ark of the Covenant. It's not about having Samuel as a prophet. Uh, return unto the Lord and serve the Lord only. And when the Lord has your whole heart, then he will deliver you. The Ark of the Covenant had been returned, meaning that the familiar relic of worship was with them again. The symbol of God's presence is there, but Samuel is still calling the Israelites to repentance. In other words, they could worship God in the tabernacle all they want, but God still wants repentance from their hearts. Going through the motions of worship wasn't enough to God. God wants the heart. Who says amen, somebody? New life. God wants us to go to church. Yes, he does. But if, you ju if just attending church is the total amount of our devotion to him, then he probably doesn't have our heart. We can attend Sabbath school, but he still wants our heart. We can participate in Pathfinders, but he still wants our heart. We can preach the gospel. We can feed the hungry. We can give a Bible study. But if God doesn't have our hearts, God is calling us to repentance in 2020. And as the Israelites gather themselves collectively to mispa, to fast and to pray and to confess their sins, the Philistines heard that the Israelites had assembled themselves and the Philistines assumed that they were assembling themselves for battle. They're there in their sackcloth and ashes and they're repentant so that their relationship can be restored with the Lord. But the enemy gathers themselves to fight against them. Somebody's not hearing me yet. So let me just break it down just a little bit further. The, the Israelites have gathered for worship, but the enemy has gathered for war. Right. The, 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 the Israelites are strengthening their faith and the enemy came to fight. 
the, the, the Philistines know that when the people of God have their relationship straightened out with God, that the Israelites are unstoppable in everything that they do. And I'm here to declare in 2020 that the devil knows that if he can break down our communication with God, that he can win battles in other areas of our life. Man, I, I've been having this experience, and I've debated whether or not I was going to share it. I think it would be beneficial for somebody, man. I, that probably about, uh, about two or three weeks ago, I embarked on, on a journey, a uh, period of, of prayer and fasting uh, with the Lord. And, and I, I said, Lord, I, I want to do one week. Uh, and I had, you know, I, I want to fast from this, want to fast from that. And so I, you know, kind of chose some things that I want to fast for. And, and uh, you know, I, I really wanted to become closer to God, to hear his voice, to understand what his vision is for my life, for this church. And I, and I, and I texted a couple of our elders, and I texted some of my uh, accountability partners, some of my best friends in life. And I said, hey, man, this is what I'm doing. Uh, this is what I'm praying for. I need you to keep me accountable. And I'm telling you right now, I started from a sundown Sunday, and I was supposed to go uh, seven days uh, uh, to the next Sunday, sundown. As soon as I started fasting and praying, day one, I knew that the enemy was attacking me. I'm talking about I, I get down on my knees, and a spirit of, of, of slumber would overcome me every time I would go to pray. And I'm knocked out like Peter, James, and John in, in Gethsemane. Come on and say, have mercy. Gone. And with prayer and fasting, I'm like, Lord, I'm, I'm supposed to be getting closer to you. Day one, day two, day three, I feel far from God. I'm like, man, what is going on with this thing? But I keep going and I keep, bring, keep praying. I get to day six. Uh, 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 the spirit of, of, of undiscipline overcomes me and I, and I end up breaking the fast early and I'm like, Lord, I, I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling lost. I'm feeling far from God. Satan is just yapping in my ear. You're undisciplined. You don't know what you're doing. You're a bad leader. How can you set that precedent for your church, for the people of God? Just talking in my ear and I'm feeling bad, like terrible for the next week and a half. It's hard for me after I broke the fence. It's hard for me to even get down on my knees to say anything to the Lord for a week and a half after that. My Lord. So I, I, I finally called up one of a couple of my accountability partners. I'm like, man, look, I'm struggling right now, man. I, I just need, I don't know what I need, if I need help, I need if I, I don't know, I'm telling you what's happening, I'm telling you what's going on, I, I ended my fast a day before I really wanted to, I, I just feel horrible. One of my accountability partners said that, he said, look man, I'm not surprised at all. You want to go to another level, and the devil knows exactly what level you're trying to get to. He's going to break down as much communication with, between you and God as possible. You shouldn't be surprised when the enemy gets on your shoulders. He said, what you need to do, you, didn't, you ended the fast early. Tomorrow, do one more day from sundown to sundown. That was this past Thursday. I'm telling you, for the past two weeks almost, I've been feeling like one of the worst Christians on the face of the planet. I, I did one more day of the fast. I said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't feel your presence when I was fasting for those six days. I don't know what's going to happen for this one more day. But when I tell you, there were so many breakthroughs when I started that, when I ended that, that one more day of fasting. Me and the Lord just praying all day. We're communicating. I'm, I'm hearing his voice. And I know that the devil was trying to, was trying to uh, not me off my square and I would not let him do it I ended that one more day of fast victorious because God is greater than the enemy see look the devil knows that there's something special and powerful that happens when we connect with God that whatever battle is fought is our victory because God is on our side who says amen that's why we don't fight we don't have to fight our battles like everybody else fights their battles. The Philistines fought their battles with, with, with knives and with swords and with spears. No, no, no. The Bible says we don't fight like everybody else fights. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the battle that we're fighting. And when the people of God gather themselves to worship and repent and to restore our relationship with God, 
The devil gets angry and starts making trouble in our lives. People of God, there's a war going on all around us. But guess what? Faith is the victory to the battle. Come on and say amen. While the Israelites are in the middle of worshiping, the Philistines attack them. When they draw near to strike, instead of going into a state of panic, Samuel takes a young lamb. The enemy's right there around the corner. He knows that. He, he doesn't panic. He takes a young lamb, sacrifices it on an altar, and he cries out to the Lord for deliverance on behalf of Israel. So when the enemy attacks, we won't, won't, won't have to panic. We, we, we have a savior. We have a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Let me keep it moving. As Samuel cries out, God thunders down upon the Philistines, and the Bible says that they're thrown into a fit of confusion. Some of them died immediately right there on the spot. Others of them were chased down by the Israelite soldiers. But it was clear that God had secured the victory for his people. The Israelites won the victory on the same field, same, same field, battlefield, where 20 years before the Israelites were defeated and the Ark of the Covenant was taken from them. The difference between this battle and the battle 20 years ago is their faith today. And if the truth be told, as we celebrate crossing over into a new year, 2019 wasn't just filled with victories. Can we be honest today? Yeah. Right, right. There, there, there are some tests that we failed in 2019. I, I, I know y'all are, y'all are holy. Y'all don't want to admit that there were some tests failed. That's all right. I'll testify on your behalf. We failed some, tw some, some tests in 2019. There were some classes that, that we didn't do that well in in 2019 for students. We might have succumbed to, to temptation in 2019. There ha might have been some bad choices made in 2019. There were some failed relationships last year. We said the wrong words to folks. Last year, we failed at the new diet just two weeks into January. Come on and say amen somebody. You may not have accomplished all of your goals last year, but those past failures can never determine our future. It reminds me of a great man of our country, Abraham Lincoln, who experienced 30 years of failure. He failed when he lost his job early in life. He got fired. He, he was defeated for state legislature when he got into politics. He failed in business after that. His sweetheart died. He had a nervous breakdown soon after. Got back into politics and was defeated for Speaker of the House. Defeated for nomination for Congress. Rejected for land officer. Defeated for U.S. Senate. Defeated for the nomination for Vice President. Defeated again for the U.S. Senate. And after all of those failures, became one of the greatest presidents that our country could ever pre present. And the difference between those who are successful or who will be successful in 2020 are though, and, and those who are not is that we work through our failures until God grants us success. Sorry to fail. But it's not all right to fail and not try again. Come on and say amen, somebody. But Samuel did something very important that day for the people of Israel. Samuel knows that it's simply human nature to forget what God has done for his people. See, God, you know, what, what oftentimes happens and what, hap what could have happened to the Israelites, we, 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 God, God, God works a miraculous victory. He, he wins a battle in our, in our life. And literally, a week or two later, we, we easily forget. Okay, y'all quiet. All right, I, I'm the only one who forgets the things that, that the Lord has done for me. Okay, let me, let, me, let me just keep it moving. Y'all not trying to be honest today. That, 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 that's all right. Uh, 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 Samuel knows that it's human nature to forget what God has done for his people. Even some of us uh, uh, can't remember some of the amazing things that God has done in our life. And so, and so Samuel brought a large stone and, and set it up on the battlefield where God won the victory and he named the stone Ebenezer, meaning hitherto the Lord has helped us. See, the purpose of the Ebenezer stone 
is to give us a physical reminder of a spiritual deliverance that God has brought upon our lives. See, there are some things in life that are so important that it becomes necessary to create some sort of memorial of what God has done. Uh, so, for, for, for instance, uh, many times we, we keep our children's first baby shoes and we eventually immortalize them by bronzing our children's first baby shoes. We, 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 we keep wedding dresses around even though they will never be worn again just so that we can keep the memory of that important day alive in our hearts. And this first Sabbath of 2020 is an Ebenezer of what the Lord has done and where he has brought you from. But here's the thing about Ebenezer's. An Ebenezer is set up only where a struggle has occurred. Okay, all right, all right. I'm trying to, I can't, I need some help with this thing, man. All right, all right. Um, there are no Ebenezer's where the road has been easy. Okay. All right. That, I think that hit a few more of you. All right. Um, for instance, you, you don't see statues of, of soldiers that haven't done anything on the battlefield. Okay. All right. That hit a few more of you. Okay. Uh, uh, they, they, the, these soldiers, they, if we immortalize them by, by making a statue or an Ebenezer of them, they had to have risked their lives or maybe even lost their lives to be worthy of a medal or, or a plaque or a statue. Uh, New Life, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you today that you haven't experienced your Ebenezer passing from the old year to the new year because the battle has been easy. You aren't here because you didn't go through anything. You aren't here because nothing tested you along the way. No, you are here on this first Sabbath of the new year because you've gone through a battle in 2019. But guess what? You went through the battle and you came out victorious. You're here because the road has been tough for you. You are here because 2019 was not an easy year, but you still crossed over. God still won, and you set up your Ebenezer to remind you of what the Lord has brought you through. And we need Ebenezers so that we can remember what has happened. Truth be told, we all admit to being forgetful at times. Many times, I don't know how many times I've gone to the grocery store and my wife has sent me and I forgot the item that she clearly texted me on the list. Amen. All right. Pray for the preacher. Uh, I knew I'd, uh, I'd get you, Ella. <laughs> we forget to take the garbage out at times. Right? It, it, it's in our human nature to forget but it's not just those simple things that we forget. Many times we easily forget what the Lord has done. Psalm 103 tells us to forget not all his benefits. All the things that God has done for us. He's given us life and breath. He's given us health and strength. He's provided for us forgiveness of sins. He's given us clean hearts and renewed right spirits within us. He's promised us eternal life even in the midst of death. Our lives have purpose and meaning because of what the Lord has done. And the Bible says that everything, yes the good things and the bad things, work together for the good of those who love God. That even the worst things that could possibly happen to a person can be used for the good of people who have a relationship with God. Even the worst tragedies don't have to go to waste because we serve such a powerful and loving God who can bring something beautiful out of the negative things. But, 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 but sometimes we forget so easily. We lose sight. We lose hope we lose our faith we continue on every new year forgetting all the mighty things god has done in the old year forgetting all the great stuff that he has prepared for us in this coming year also and it's no wonder that over and over in the bible 
Someone builds an altar out of stones. Noah built an altar. He built an Ebenezer. Moses built an Ebenezer. Jacob built an Ebenezer. Elijah built an Ebenezer. All for the purpose of remembering what God has done for them. One stone laid upon another carefully to last for generations to come. To serve as a reminder uh, that, that, that God has been gracious to us. And this new year isn't just about what you have uh, what, what you have done this is an Ebenezer memorializing what God has done for you because God has helped you to get here God has helped you Ebenezer hitherto the Lord has helped us and when we look through the scriptures I, I, I'm preparing to close in just a second but when I, I can't help but look through the scripture and we see this theme of God being our help through the Bible over and over again Psalm chapter 37 it says the Lord helps them and rescues them Psalm 46 God is in the midst of the city it shall not be moved God will help uh, help it when the morning dawns uh, Psalm 86 you Lord have helped me and comforted me uh, Psalm 121 uh, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes from my help comes from where everybody it comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth Psalm 124 our help is in the name of the Lord uh, Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength a very present help in our times of trouble this is our Ebenezer thus far the Lord has helped us. And people of God, aren't you glad that God helps us and gives us ways of remembering the help that he gives us? Come on and say amen. amen. That's why I love how the book Steps to Christ puts this. And I just love this quote. It says, let us keep fresh in our memory all the tender mercies that God has shown us. The tears he has wiped away. Anyone cried in 2019? The pains he has through. Anyone have pain in 2019? The, the anxieties removed. The fears dispelled. The wants supplied. The blessings bestowed. Thus strengthening ourselves for all that is before us through the remainder of our journey. And it doesn't matter how much you have accomplished. It doesn't matter how far you have already gone. It doesn't matter what you have overcome already. We still have a ways to go. One author said it well. Even if you get to the top of the mountain, you still got to get your way back down. Come on and say amen, somebody. Our journey is never finished. But the best thing you can do is what we're doing today. We are raising our Ebenezer right here and right now, declaring that because God has helped us thus far, we will continue to move forward in this new year. So I'm here to tell you and to challenge you, people of God, don't get comfortable with where you are right now. Keep moving forward to where God wants you to be in 2020. And we have to remember that the cross of Jesus Christ is our ultimate Ebenezer. It reminds us that Jesus died for our sins. That's why the songwriter could write, Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Come on and say amen, somebody. Here I raised my Ebenezer. This first Sabbath in 2020, we raise it up and we raise it up high because God has been too good for us not to remember what he has done for us in the old year. So I prepare to give you an appeal. A marathon runner was asked how he kept focus through the fatigue of running such a long distance. And he told the reporter, he said, before I actually run the race that day 
I scope out the entire trail. And I start pinpointing some milestones along the way. And as I'm running the race, I keep a mental check of those milestones that I had pinpointed before the race. And it keeps me energized and I tell myself, oh, I passed that, let me keep on moving. Well, I passed that, Ebenezer. Let me keep on trucking. Well, I passed that. I'm almost home. Oh, yeah, here's the last one. I'm almost there. Let me keep running. Let me keep, uh, keep stepping closer and closer to the finish line. Because he had raised Ebenezer's along the way, he was able to keep moving towards the goal of the finish line. And, folk... We've got to take times and moments of Ebenezer's and celebrating where God has brought us from. So today, today, very simple appeal. If you want to celebrate with me what God has done for us in 2019, I invite you to stand. And I just want us to give God a round of applause. Amen. Has God done something for you? Has, has, has he brought you over some mountains? Has he helped you to cross some rivers? Has he made some bad relationships whole? Has he helped you to pass that class that you had no business passing? Has he helped you to raise your children? Has he given you a better marriage? Are you, uh, have you made some better progress in your life than you were in 2018? And you never thought you, you would get this far in 2019, but God has allowed you to cross over. Give him some praise. Give him some honor. Give him some glory. Let it be a sweet fragrance to him. Let him enjoy it. We thank you, God, for what you have done for us. And to you, Lord, we raise this Ebenezer, and we will not forget. As you're standing, your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. For one last appeal for someone today who didn't realize how you made it through in 2019, but today you, 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 you understand that there is one that's greater than yourself that helped you to see 2020, this new year, and you want to acknowledge him publicly. And today you want to dedicate the year 2020 to him by giving your heart, giving your life, and giving your soul to him. If that's your desire today, I invite you to come out of your seat. I, I invite you down to the front. I want to pray with you as your pastor. Today, you, 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 thought, you thought 2019 might have been all about you. Maybe, it was, maybe you have some good skills or some good gifts. You thought, well, maybe it was my skills, my gifts that got me over. But today, you realize it wasn't that. It was my relationship with the Lord. It was God who really got me over. Is that you today? Come on out of your seat. You want to dedicate this year to him and give your heart and your life to him in 2020, you want to start your year off right. Is that your desire? Is that your desire? Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are you coming? Amen. Giving your heart and your life to him. If you start starting fresh and new, that's all right. New beginnings, that's okay. Amen. Come on, let's press closer. Closer. Starting fresh, you starting new. Saying, Lord, I I don't want 2020 to be like 2019. I I I want growth. I want a new experience with you. I want something fresh in my life. Lord, I know I'll make mistakes in 2020. That's all right, Lord. I I, I know you've got my back. That's all right. I know I won't always be at my best in 2020, but Lord, I'm, I'm willing to stand back up, to keep on trucking. I'm willing to along this journey of this new year to start naming and selecting Ebenezer's. Oh, there's one. Let me keep on walking. Oh yeah, there's another one. Oh yeah, the devil got me tired. That's all right, I'm gonna keep going. 
we're running a race this is not a sprint this is a marathon but if you set up your Ebenezer's along the way you will not forget what the Lord has done for you is there anybody else anyone else anyone else your heads about your eyes are closed as we pray together father we raise it up at this time right here and right now january 4th the year of our lord 2020 lord you have done marvelous things for us and we give you all the praise the honor and glory we re recognize today that it was never about us that you have constantly been been feeding us and, and 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 giving us the things that we need the things that we want in order to succeed and right now we give you all the praise because it's to you alone that it's due help us never to forget what you have done during those times when we do forget lord we admit that we're only human we we will forget at times be patient with us lord god pamper us with your grace disciple us with your mercy so that when we do forget you remind us that we're humble enough to recognize that you have our best interest at heart so god as we journey through this new year we're careful to give you all the praise honor and glory in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen